Once you're settled with an exhalation, relax completely the body into the ground, allowing it to flow with gravity, to be heavy, to be soft. And in this way, beginning to observe yourselves more fully from inside, from outside, drawing the senses away from the external world and into the richness of this experience. And now stretch the arms forward, coming to Yoga Mudrasan. Beyond the fingertips, so the palms are lifted up. In this way, the arms become more vibrant. Roll the eyes of the elbows forward so that the shoulders can broaden. And then see if the forehead will come down and reach the floor. With the arms stretched in this way, we can really access the trunk, the sides of the trunk, the waist. So now pressing the palms to the floor, but keeping the length of the arms, keeping the engagement. See how much length you can bring to the left waist, the right waist. And in this way, we start to bring spaciousness to the trunk, to the organs that are contained inside. Keep the breath soft, smooth, and even so that the mind doesn't wander from the body. And then inhaling and looking up, coming up onto your hands and knees, we're going to come to our first downward dog. So spread the fingers widely apart, Straighten the arms, roll the eyes of the elbows to face forward, and then keeping the knees bent, begin to push yourselves back to Adho Mukha Svanasan, downward dog. Keep the knees bent for now, just stretch the arms and stretch the spine, get the maximum extension that you can find, and when you feel it, then begin to straighten the legs. And as you straighten the legs, once you've reached the place where you think they're straight, re-squeeze the four corners of the knees, and then push the front thighs backwards, so you feel the backs of your thighs broadening, the backs of the knees broadening, and the buttocks lifting higher and higher to the sky. Keep the arms stretched. Keep pressing into the heels of the hands. And now coming forward to what we call plank pose, draw the navel to the spine so there's a strength in the core. And now bend the right knee towards you and step it forward to a nice wide lunge. Beginning to propel yourself forward and backwards using the back foot so you'll feel a stretch in the toe and the foot. Keep the back legs straight as you move forward and backwards. Keep pushing the hips down so the groins, the thighs are opened. And then rest the back knee on the ground. And turn and twist to your right. Observe the sensations. Keep the buttocks moving down. And then place your right hand on your right hip and roll the skin of the right hip down towards the ground to bring length. Then bend the back leg and reach with your right arm and take hold of the ankle. Kneeling Ekaparabhikasan. Begin to draw the foot towards you. You'll feel the front thigh stretching. Keep pushing the buttocks down, rolling the front shoulders back as you draw the foot closer, closer. And then exhaling, releasing. Now you're going to bring that back leg, the left leg, in so that you're now kneeling. Notice how the knee of the front foot is right above the heel. Then inhale, bring the arms up. Press your palms together. Create that firmness and then turn and twist to the right as you bend the elbow. So the left tricep will be pressing against the outside edge of your right thigh. The palms are pressing firmly to help you to twist more and more. And you're looking for that sense of inner stability. Keep rolling the front shoulders back, feeling the chest open to the sky and relax the face. Try to keep the breath smooth, not hard, but soft, flowing. And then release, place the hands to the floor and come back to plank pose. And again, draw the navel to the spine, make the legs firm, shoulders away from the ears, eyes of the elbows moving forward. Now bend the left knee in and step the left leg forward to a nice wide lunge. Now propelling yourself first forward and backwards, really feeling the stretch of the back foot, the toes stretching, the back knee straight, the front thigh and the groin beginning to be accessed. And now bending the back leg, place the knee, the thigh on the floor, and gently turn and twist to the left, and take with your hand the outside edge of your left hip and roll it down towards the ground, keeping it broad. And then go ahead and bend the back leg, the right leg, and reach around with your left hand for the ankle, the foot, and begin to draw the foot towards you, but keep pressing the hips down to the ground as you draw the foot towards you. Observe that length coming to the front thighs. Keep drawing the leg towards you, front shoulders back, and then exhale, release. Now bringing the back leg, the right leg in, so you'll be kneeling on the knee, the shin, the front of the foot, coming up with the torso, then inhaling the arms, pressing the palms together, which helps to create a stability, and coming to Parivrita Parshvakonasan, number one, preparation number one. 
So the right tricep is pressing against the outside edge of the left thigh. Feel evenness in your hands, evenness through your arms, evenness with the front shoulders rolling back. And keep turning and twisting to the left, using the exhale to twist more and more to the left. Head back, relax the face. Keep that calmness to have that stability. And then exhale, release. And this time coming to Uttanasana. So we're going to do a hanging Uttanasana with the feet spread the width of the mat. Make sure the feet are completely parallel facing forward. Tuck the head right in between the upper arms and with your fingertips pull the elbow tips to the floor. Try to lengthen the trunk. Keep the kneecaps being pulled up the legs, the quadricep muscles being pulled up the legs. Keep lifting the buttock bones to the sky, broadening the backs of the thighs. And now we're going to change the cross of the arms. And then again, re-tuck the head right in. Try to pull the elbow tips back. Make sure the hips are more and more right over the four wheels of the feet. We have a tendency to move the hips back behind the heels. So keep coming forward until you have to engage the kneecaps and the thighs up. And pull with the tips of your fingers to pull the elbow tips to the floor. Tugging, pulling, give a good stretch. And now fingertips onto the floor in front of you. Roll the eyes of the elbows to face forward. The eyes of the elbows are the inner elbows. And when we roll them forward, the shoulders automatically broaden. So we learn to spiral the arm energy. Placing the hands on the shin, try to stretch more and more the front spine. Move the trapezius muscles away from the ears. Keep the legs firm, the kneecaps coming up the thighs. And now coming to Uttanasana, but this time pulling the hands on the backs of the heels. Try to press the back ribs forward so you have a sensation that the back body is moving the front body to the thighs. Check that the shoulders are still broad away from the ears. And then release, place the hands on the floor and now bending the knees, we're going to jump back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Again, keep the knees bent and look first for the arm extension and then the spine extension so you find that length. And then beginning to straighten the legs, finding full Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Keep stretching the arms, stretching the legs. Now coming to plank pose again. Draw the navel again to the spine, keeping the core strong, the legs strong. And now from here, exhale, come to upward dog. Nice and gentle, that's our first one. Looking to open the sternum, to push the sternum forward, to press the buttocks down, to press the tailbone down, to lengthen the front waist, the side waist. Roll the shoulders back, keep the arms stretched. And exhale back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. In Adho Mukha Svanasana, find the front thighs and push the front thighs back again. So the weight of the body is moving back away from the hands. And then again, coming through plank pose. And from plank pose, we're going to come to Urdha Mukha Svanasana, upward dog. Exhale, and here we are. Now move the hips so they come closer and closer to the hands. Then roll the front shoulders back. Feel the legs vibrant. Press into the tops of the feet. Press the tailbone down. Try to bring curvature to the middle and upper back rather than the lumbar. Broaden the sternum. And then exhale back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Respread your palms, your fingers, stretch the arms, stretch the legs, lift the buttocks higher. Give a good push with the breath, imprint, opening the chest, sides of the neck even. And coming again forward through plank pose, keep the shoulders broad, the legs firm. And now lift your right leg, keeping the stability of the body, so coming from the core. Then bend the right knee, draw it towards you, knitting the abdominal fibers together. Then exhale the leg back out, keep the stability, shoulders broad. Then inhale the knee back in, again draw the navel to the spine. And then step the leg forward to a nice wide lunge. Make sure the back leg is straight, charged, move the hips as close as you can towards the floor. And propel yourself gently forward and backwards. And see how things have shifted from the first time already. And then bending the back leg, let it rest on the floor. And turn and twist to the right. Moving the right outer hip down towards the ground before bending the back leg and reaching with the right arm for the ankle. Roll the front shoulder girdle back as you draw the foot towards you. Press the buttocks down. Stretch the front waist. Bring the foot closer, closer. Breathe. Use the exhalation to dissolve the tension of the thigh. And then exhale, release. Straighten the back leg again. Create that charge, that awareness. And now step back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Restretch your arms, restretch your legs, try to be fully aware, fully present, giving your maximum, feeling the maximum, lifting the buttocks to the sky. And now coming again to plank pose, finding that stability, that parallelness with the ground, that firmness. Then bring the left leg slightly up, 
Keep the stability of the body, draw the navel to the spine as you bring the knee towards you, knitting the abdominal fibers together. And then with an exhalation, extend the leg back out. Keep it slightly lifted, keep the stability, shoulders away from the ears. And then bring the knee back in and step the leg forward to a nice wide lunge. Begin to rock forward and backwards, keeping the back leg charged, strong, straight, keeping the hips moving down before resting the back knee on the floor and turning and twisting to your left now. Moving the skin of the outer left hip down and then bending the back leg and reaching with your left hand for the ankle of the foot. Keep turning, keep twisting, keep rolling the shoulders back as you bring the foot towards you. Use the exhalation to dissolve, to release into the thigh. And then let go of the leg and recharge the back leg, turning the toes under, straighten the leg completely before stepping back and refinding Adho Mukha Svanasana Downward Dog. So now a little bit tired, so we really have to refocus in, squeeze the elbows, squeeze the knees, push into the heels of the hands, push the front thighs back, lift the buttocks higher, find an even breath that can soothe, that can centralize, that can release, even while staying alert. And now coming down onto your knees, sitting back on your heels, and refinding Yoga Mudrasan in Virasan. On the fingertips, not the palms on the floor yet. Keep the arms lifted away from the floor. Keep rolling the eyes of the elbows up to the sky and feeling the broadness that comes to the shoulders with this, the freedom of the neck. Every third exhalation, send it to the hips, into the groins, to release, to relax, to soften. And now bring the arms by the side of the body and rest them in child's pose. With an exhalation, release completely down into the ground. Quieten the brain, soften the face. Moving into some shoulder openers. So go ahead and bring the hands now behind the back. Interlock the fingers together and lift the arms. And as you lift the arms, think of rolling the front shoulders back. So the front shoulders are going up to the sky. The collarbones are lengthening. The arms are stretched. Keep pulling them upwards, pulling them upwards, bringing that openness to the front shoulder girdle. Keep the sides of the neck even and re-relax the jaw so that none of the tension moves into that area. And then exhale, release the hands back to the lower back. And now changing the interlock of the fingers, coming up for our second round, begin by rolling the front shoulders back and then moving that movement all the way up through the arms and out through the fingertips and up to the sky. Notice how you may be pressing more firmly with your forehead. Keep releasing that, keeping the cervical spine long, lifting the arms up, exhaling the arms over. Openness coming to the shoulders, to the shoulder blades, to the neck, before releasing the hands and resting them again on the ground by the side of the body. Deep exhalation, release completely, relax completely. Observe the sensation of freedom, circulation. And then slowly rolling up, lower back, middle back, upper back. And here we are all warmed up and ready to move on to some abdominal work. So we're going to be sitting on our mat with the legs in front of us, coming to what is called Padipurna Navasa, boat pose. So first of all, bringing the hands behind you with the fingertips pointing forward, roll the front shoulders back and try to lift your front sternum, which is the first place to collapse when we come into abdominal work. And in this particular pose, we want to learn how to keep the sternum and the chest lifted. Have the inner knees touching, the inner feet touching. Now leaning back on the hands, you can move them back if you need to, keep the elbows close together, Feel the core beginning to work. Keep the inner knees touching. Now begin to straighten the legs. Try to keep lifting the sternum to keep rolling the front shoulders back. Squeeze the knees, make the shin bones firm. And then bend the knees, repress into the fingertips and lift the sternum again, then re-stretch the legs. And try to keep that openness that you just gained. Keep the feet charged. Now bend the knees. Move the hands a little bit further back. Lean into them. And again, straighten the legs. And now coming to the full pose, we're going to stretch our arms straight, that the palms are facing each other and the arms are parallel to the floor. Keep the legs charged, the arms charged, that firmness, that solidness, the shin bones firm, the ankles firm. Keep lifting the sternum, trying to roll the front shoulders back. And now bending the knees and allow the knees to fold to the side, coming to what we call Barakonasan, opening the groins and then bringing the fingertips onto the floor in front of you and walking the fingertips forward, Yoga Mudrasan and Barakonasan. So a good stretch of the groins, relaxation of the abdomen, refinding the breath, even up the sides of the neck, deep inhalation, deep exhalation. And now bringing the knees back up and coming for another round of this kind of work. 
So bringing the hands behind, fingertips facing forward, lean back and straighten the legs straight up. And now stretch the arms coming straight into the full pose. Padipurna Navasan. Push through the balls of the feet, spread the toes, charge the legs, charge the arms. Feel your firmness. And then bend the knees, bring the knees back out to Badakonasan. Bring the heels close to the groin, walk the fingertips forward, coming to Yoga Mudrasan. As you stretch the arms, try to stretch the waist. Move the shoulders away from the ears, the trapezius muscles down the back. And exhale into the hips, into the groins, into the abdomen. Releasing, relaxing. Before coming back up again. Bringing the knees in together again, lining them up, inner knees, inner feet. Fingertips back to the floor, shoulders rolled back, elbows in. Lift the feet off the floor. And straighten the legs and the arms at the same time. So here we are in full pose. Charge the legs, charge the arms. Keep the abdomen close to the spine, don't let it puff out. Hold everything firm, strong. And then bend the knees, bring the heels close to the groin. And again, come forward to Yoga Mudrasan in Balakonasan. Stretching the arms, pressing down into the fingertips to lift the arms higher away from the floor, squeezing the elbows straight, spiraling the flesh of the arms, the muscle of the arms, so the eyes of the elbows face forward, the shoulders are broad. And then inhaling back up, bringing the knees again together and stretching the legs straight. So coming now to our next abdominal work, Ardhanabhasan, so interlocking the fingers behind the back of the skull, elbows open, begin to curl downwards to the floor, and now lift the legs so they're hovering above the floor and push through the balls of the feet. Watch for the elbows coming in, which means your hands are supporting and you're coming from the neck, you want to keep using the abdomen, and then releasing, coming back up, elbows back, lift the chest, and come forward to a Paschimottanasana, forward bend. If you can't reach the feet, have the hands on the floor, on each side of the legs. And just release, relax the abdomen, find that breath again, keep the legs firm. Then coming back up, again, Ardhanabhasan. So preparing first by rolling the shoulders back, lifting the chest. And then lifting the arms up, interlocking the fingers behind the back of the skull, elbows open, armpits open. And then begin to curl yourselves down, drawing the muscles tightly together in the core before lifting the legs. Trying to find a firmness. Having the mind, the body alert. And lifting back up, open the chest, elbows back. And exhaling, coming forward again to Pashimottanasan. In Pashimottanasan, even though we're relaxing, the legs are still firm. Keep lengthening the backs of the legs. Drawing the femur bone into the hip sockets and pushing out through the balls of the feet. And then releasing, and again, Ardhanabhasan, interlocking the fingers, elbows open, armpits open, chest open, before rolling back, feel the core become strong, become engaged, now lift the legs, charge the legs, push through the balls of the feet, squeeze the knees, make the shin bones firm, the ankles sharp, have that steadiness, now relax the face, and then lifting back up again, elbow tips back, shoulder blades in, chest open, before exhaling, and coming forward to Pashimottanasan. In Pashimottanasan, press the back ribs in so the chest is open to the front thighs. Keep the backs of the legs broad, the heels pressing down, the shoulders rolling away from the ears, clearing space, finding a place to rest, and then inhaling up and releasing. So moving on now, coming to Upavishtakonasan. Nice wide legs, if you can, line the heels up with the corners of the mat when you're facing the long edge of the mat. And move your buttock bones back and out to the side. Press the front thighs down so that they move to the bone and stretch the front waists. Bring spaciousness. Now first of all, bring the hands to the floor behind you. And with that action, roll the front shoulders back. And begin to press the back ribs, the dorsal spine in to open the chest. Looking up to the sky to help the chest move up to the sky to help feel that sensation. You're going to include that length now as you come forward to your mudrasan. So keep pressing the back ribs in and opening the sternum as if you were arching back, even though you're coming forward. Keep the legs vibrant and notice how you might be pressing into one heel more than the other. Press both heels down. Squeeze and wrap the thigh muscles around the thigh bones. Stretching the arms and as you stretch the arms, stretch your waists. Again, evenly stretching the left, the right. 
before inhaling, looking up and slowly, gently coming up. We're going to be coming to a twisting Upavishta Konasana now. So once again, roll the shoulders back, chest open, and now turn and twist to your right. So I'm doing the mirror image of you. So you're twisting to your right. Walk the hands down the side of the leg as far as they can go. And turn your right abdomen to your left so that more and more you're really right on the top of the left thigh. If you can reach with the head, have the chin move forward so the front throat gets a stretch and move the trapezius muscles down the back. Now what's happened to the legs? Keeping them alert. Keep the backs of the thighs stretched. Then inhaling, looking up, walking the hands back up. We're going to change to the left side now. Turning, twisting to the left, shoulders back, chest open. Create that length so that as you come forward, the length of the front trunk stays with you. This is what brings the spaciousness to the organs. Keep extending the arms as far forward as they will go by the sides of the feet. The heels pressing down, spread the toes, bring spaciousness, push through the balls of the feet. And turn the right abdomen to the left in a twisting action that helps you to lie right on top of the left thigh. And then inhale, looking up and walking the hands back up before exhaling, releasing. Take the backs of your knees with your fingers, bend your knees back in, find again Baddha Konasan. The groins are open now. And this time you're going to come from Baddha Konasan to another pose. It's a pigeon pose, a hip opener. Bring your right foot on top of your left inner shin. And then see if your foot will move and actually rest on the knee. If it won't, move it back down to the middle of the calf shin. And in this way, come forward to Yoga Mudrasan. So deep opening of the hips. Again, keep the breath fluid, soft, so that's going to help dissolve the congestion, the tightness, and also the fear of the cells when they start to move in this way at first. It can make us feel nauseous. Keep the arms stretched so your mind is expanding everywhere, from the fingertips, through the hips, to the soles of the feet. Stretch the arms and stretch the waist. Then inhaling, looking up, slowly coming up. And coming in this position to a twist, so turning to the right. Again, I'm the mirror image of you. And then begin to walk the hands forward. So, Parivrita Yoga Mudrasan. Parivrita means twisting in Sanskrit. Stretching the left arm forward. More and more keep turning and twisting to the right. The left abdomen moving to the right. Keep sending exhalations into the hips, into the groin. Softening, releasing. Before coming back up. And now turning and twisting to the left, shoulders back, chest open. And then exhale, walking forward to Parivrita Yoga Mudrasan in Double Godasan. That's a Sanskrit name for pigeon pose. Again, keep the breath fluid, moving, soft, generating that trust in the cells so the body can relax as you stretch the right arm forward more and more to the left, rolling the right abdomen to the left. And then coming up, releasing. And of course, we're going to change sides. So now your left leg is going to come on top of your right leg. You want to keep the shins as parallel as possible to the edges of the mat. So see what the body will allow, where the foot will come, and if possible, placing it on the knee. Otherwise, being happy with whatever we get, because it's good news, we're getting in there. And then stretching forward to Yoga Mudrasan in Double Godasan. Deep exhalation, send the stream of the exhalation into the hips, into the groins, to widen, to soften, to release, to relax. And at the same time, keep stretching the arms to bring sensation to the arms, the shoulders, the sides of the trunk. Keep walking the fingertips forward, having that alert detachment everywhere. And now inhaling, looking up, we're going to be coming up and twisting first to the right. So prepare by rolling the shoulders back, opening the chest. And then exhale and coming forward to Yoga Mudrasan with the Parivrita twisting action. Keep moving the trapezius muscles down the back, soothing the neck, the brain, quieting the face. Send the exhalation into the hips. Keep rolling the left abdomen to the right, twisting, turning, before coming back up. And now we're going to twist and turn to the left. So preparing first, rolling the shoulders back, having an equilibrium, inhabiting the body with the breath, with the senses, and coming forward now to the twisting action. So twisting with the right arm, stretching it forward, 
turning the right abdomen to the left with each exhalation, making that spiral that helps the body to twist, to turn, to relax. Draw the ears in towards each other so the brain remains quiet. And have that smooth, even, regular inhalation and exhalation that moves everywhere through the body. Then inhaling back up and releasing the legs. And the hips are going to feel great after this. And we're going to come and lie down now on the mat for a little bit more core work. So straighten the legs straight in front of you. Have the inner feet touching, the inner knees touching, which means the legs are charged. They're strong. They're firm. They're not passive and rolled open. Roll the shoulders back, the arms extended to the side. Observe your body, how it's aligned. Does it feel even? Are the buttocks moving towards the heels? Is the lower back as close as possible to the floor? Now bring the arms above the head, cross the thumbs, and stretch the arms back onto the floor behind you. The backs of the hands are pressing onto the floor. The heels are pressing onto the floor. It's called a long vertical stretch. I want you to imagine that someone's pulling your feet and someone's pulling your hands in the opposite direction and you're being stretched everywhere. Keep moving the buttocks towards the heels. Don't let the lower back over arch. Buttocks towards the heels. Stretch the arms. Stretch the armpits. Stretch the waist. Feel the beauty of that unfolding, the skin stretching. And underneath the skin, the flesh, the muscles. And then bending the knees, placing the feet on the floor. We're going to move now into some of that core work I promised you. So lift the feet up. And let's come to 90 degrees. Urva Prasadita Parasan. So the legs are perpendicular to the ground. Charge the legs. Firm your shin bones and sharpen your ankles. And imagine flames are coming out of your feet. And then bend the knees. And now push the legs to 60 degrees. Keep the lower back pressing onto the floor. And keep pushing energy out through the feet so the entire leg works. Then bend the knees. And now coming to the hardest one, pushing the legs to 30 degrees or as low as you can go without lifting the lower back off the floor. Charge the legs. And then bending the knees back in. And this time extending the right leg up to 90 degrees and the left leg to 30 degrees. Going to be coming to yoga scissor work. So go ahead and cross the legs diagonally, changing legs, crossing like scissor blades. And again, try to cross at 60 degrees. Keep the lower back pressed to the floor. Don't move fast. Move slowly enough that you can really feel that the abdomen is staying connected to the lower back. Keep stretching the arms as you interchange the legs. If it's too hard with the legs straight, bend the knees and work up to straightening the legs. And then releasing, bending the knees and placing the feet on the floor. Breathe, observe, move the buttocks towards the heels, relax the lower back. And now lift the arms back up, change the cross of your thumbs and re-stretch your arms on the floor behind you. As you stretch the arms, move the trapezius muscles away from the ears. And now bringing the feet off the floor, lining up the inner knees, the inner feet. And pushing the legs up to 90 degrees. Urda prasadita parasan. Charge the legs even more, broaden the backs of the knees, the thighs, sharpen your ankles. Stretch the arms, now bend the knees. And pushing the legs diagonally away from you, coming to 60 degrees. Keep the lower back pressed on the floor. Keep pushing out through the balls of the feet. Relax the jaw, the tongue, then bend the knees. Keep the inner knees lined up, the inner feet lined up. And now push and extend the legs to 30 degrees or higher if that's too much. Keep pushing through the balls of the feet, keeping the lower back connected to the floor. Stretching the arms and relaxing the face at the same time. And then bending the knees. And now pushing the legs back up to 60 degrees, diagonally away from you. Keep the lower back pressed to the floor. Find a firmer expression of the pose. Then bend the knees and push the legs back up to 90 degrees. And feel the femur bones coming into the hip sockets. So the lower hips are penetrating, pushing into the floor before bending the knees. And coming to scissors on the other side, so bringing the left leg up, the right leg to 30. And beginning to cross your legs. Really visualize scissor blades and how they're firm and they're sharp. And try to create that same firmness and sharpness in the thighs, in the shins, in the ankles. Press the lower back to the floor. 
Make sure the abdomen isn't puffing to the sky. Keep drawing it into the lower back, pressing into the floor and stretching the arms. Slow, soft, regular and firm. Pushing through the balls of the feet, spreading the toes as you switch the legs from side to side, trying to cross them at 60. And, and bending the knees and bringing the feet back to the floor. Lift the buttocks slightly, move them towards the heels so the lower back refines length after this work. Relax the abdomen. And then release the arms, rolling the shoulders back, stretching the arms out to the side, the palms open to the sky. With an exhalation, release, relax. Now place your left hand on your left hip, bend your right knee, and with the two fingers of the right hand, stretch the right leg straight, holding the right big toe. Supta Parangustasan 1. Begin to draw the leg towards you, but try to keep the leg straight. So as you draw the leg towards you, you're pushing the front of the thigh away from you. This keeps the back of the leg broad. Move the shoulders away from the ears. Keep the face relaxed, even though the leg is charged and you're feeling a lot of sensations there. And now coming to lateral Supta Parangustasan. So bringing the right leg towards you into the right so that the foot is in line with the shoulder. And now roll your right abdomen to the left, away from that extended leg, and stretch the left arm to the side. Feeling the groins open, keep the sharpness of the right leg. Moving the trapezius muscles down the back, the chest is open. Keep widening the pubic bone, widening the groins. And then bring the leg back up and release. And place the outside ankle on the top of your left thigh, right by the knee. Reach your left hand behind the left thigh and place your right palm on the right inner knee. Draw the left thigh towards you with your left hand and push your inner knee away from you with the palm of the right hand. So you're opening the hip. You're doing a variation of Supta Parangustasan 2. Even here, keeping the front shoulders rolled back, the chest open, before exhaling and releasing the feet back to the floor. Palms open, take a moment to breathe, to relax, to centralize. And now repeating the work on the left hand side. So bringing the left foot off the floor, reaching with the two fingers of the left hand for the big toe, and finding first Supta Parangustasan 1. The right hand is holding the front right pelvis bone just to stabilize. Keep stretching the left leg, broadening the back of the knee, broadening the back of the thigh, seeing if the leg will come closer, keeping the femur bone coming into the hip socket, chest open, back ribs pressing in to open the chest. And once you've come to your maximum in that, we're going to come to lateral Supta Parangustasan, so bringing the leg towards you and out to the left, towards you to the left, trying to keep the foot in line with the shoulder, and rolling the left abdomen to the right and then stretching the arm out to the side. With an exhalation, broaden the pubic bone, widen the groins, keep the left leg straight, strong and stretching. Roll the front shoulders back, the chest open, the sides of the neck even. And observe all these sensations with the breath, through the breath, before lifting the leg back up. And now coming to Supta Parangustasan 2, a variation, placing the outer ankle on the front of your right knee thigh. The right hand will hold the back of the right thigh and the left palm will push against the left inner knee. So drawing the right leg towards you and pushing the inner knee away from you keeps the hips even, but also creates that broadness that's healthy for the sacroiliacs, the lower back and the entire body. And, and releasing the feet back to the floor centralizing, neutralizing, and now lifting your right leg up, crossing the knees and winding the right foot behind the left calf. Then bringing the legs over to the left, so into a twist, and turning and looking to the right. This is called supine garudasan. The right arm is stretched out to the side, the hand is in line with the shoulder. And roll your left abdomen to your right with each exhalation as you're bringing the knees down to the left. Use the hand to help pull the knees, the thighs, more to the left as you turn, as you twist to the right. Soften the face, soften the neck, and keep moving the trapezius muscles down the back so that the front body has a chance to become long, to become open. And then exhaling, bring the legs back up, unwind to the feet, feet to the floor, buttocks to the heels, centralize before bringing the left leg back up, crossing the left knee across the right and winding the left foot behind the right calf. Then using the right hand to bring the knees down to the right, twisting as you turn and look down the length of the left arm. Twisting Supangarudasan. 
Relax the breath so that softness comes to the twist. This is what will allow the twist to move, to turn. Keep the left arm stretched, the face quiet, just observing all the sensations, trying to maintain that evenness of breath. As you twist, bringing the legs more and more to the right, twisting more and more to the left, right abdomen to the left, right lung to the left. And then bringing the legs back up, uncrossing, and re bringing the feet to the floor, re centralizing, finding that evenness. The arms are stretched out to the side of the body. Then bring the feet off the floor, interlock the fingers together, finding Dvi Parasutta Pavana Muktasan. Inner knees touching, inner feet touching. This will keep the hips even, which will in turn keep both the left and the right side of the trunk more even. Front shoulders rolled back. Learning to read the body, what it's telling you, creating that dialogue with the body. Where you feel evenness, where you feel unevenness. And now stretching the arms out to the side, we're going to be coming to some twists. Unfold the legs a little bit so there's less of a bend. And bring the legs over to the right hand side. Jatara Parivatanasana number one. Of course, turning and twisting away from the legs, looking down the length of the left arm. Try to keep the inner feet and the inner knees relatively lined up so that the hips have an evenness. And with each inhalation, lengthen the front spine. And with each exhalation, roll and turn the right abdomen to the left. Trapezius muscles still flowing down the back so the chest can stay open, the lungs are broad. Then bringing the legs back up, see how I have a 90 degree angles behind my calf and the back of my thigh. And bringing now the legs to the left, Jatara Parivartanasan. Turning and twisting to the right. Press the backs of the hands into the floor and stretch the fingers long. Try to line up the inner knees, the inner feet as best as you can to even out the hips. And with each inhalation, lengthen the front spine. And with each exhalation, turn and twist to the right. Rolling the left abdomen to the right abdomen, the left lung to the right lung. The trapezius muscles flowing down the back so that the sternum is broadening, is stretching, is having more circulation. And then bringing the legs back up, we're coming to number two. So now we bring the calves close to the back of the thighs and we turn and twist to the right, keeping the knees very high so they're in line with our right elbow. So it's a more acute angle. Turning and looking down the length of the left arm, press into the backs of the hands, make sure the hand is in line with the shoulders. And again with the inhalation, lengthen your front spine, rolling the shoulders back. And with the exhalation, turn, roll, twist and move the trapezius muscles down the back. Then bringing the legs back up, still keeping the backs of the calves touching the backs of the thighs. Turn and twist now to your left, bringing the knees as high up towards the left elbow as possible. And turn and exhale, look down the length of the right arm. Keep pressing the backs of the hands into the floor, pressing the back ribs in. Lengthen your collarbones so that the front chest is widening, stretching to the left, to the right. And use the exhalation to roll, to turn, to twist more and more away from the bent legs. Now quiet in the face so there's no tension there. And then bring the legs back up. Coming to some more hip openers, supine kamukasan three. So crossing your right knee all the way over your left leg, but not winding the foot behind the calf. This time, moving the feet apart from each other and with your hands holding your shins, your ankles, and drawing the shins and the calves towards you. Keep rolling the front shoulders back. You'll feel the hips, the sacroiliac, the lower back area stretching, broadening. Maintain a smooth and even breath that calms the system. Using the exhalation as a tool, and then uncross the legs and now cross the left leg over the right the feet are apart from each other reach with your hands and see if you can draw the shins towards you try to move the heels away from sticking to the edges of your thighs so lifting the feet up a little bit and then pulling the shins towards you relax the front throat which tends to get tense here relax the cheek muscles all of the little muscles around the eyes and use the exhalation as that tool to broaden, to release, to relax, drawing the legs closer. And then releasing and uncrossing the legs and refinding Dvi Para Sukta Pavana Muktasan. Lining the inner knees up, lining the inner feet up. And keeping the right knee bent towards you, extend the left leg straight onto the floor. Eka Para Sukta Pavana Muktasan. Roll that left thigh in so the kneecap faces the sky. Stretch the back of the leg. Press the heel to the floor and push through the balls of the feet. 
And now changing sides, extend the right leg, bend the left knee in towards you, interlock the fingers around the front of the knee. And once again, with the extended leg, roll that right thigh in, kneecap to the floor, press the heel down, stretch the back of the right leg firmly, and keep the foot alert. And then exhale, release the left leg, and find Supta Tadasana on the floor, so the inner knees are touching, the inner feet are touching, the thighs are both rolling in towards each other. And now you're going to move your left leg out to the side so it lines up with the corner of the mat. Bend your right knee, holding onto the outer edge of your thigh. Bring the right leg to the side and roll your right abdomen to the left, away from that leg as you stretch the left arm. So the right knee is bent, drawing the knee closer towards you and the outer edge of the thigh closer down towards the floor. Keep the left leg very charged, pressing the heel down. And then exhale and release. Changing sides, so first find Supta Tadasan. Line yourself up. Often we go askew from pose to pose, so re-centralize. And now move your right leg to the corner, the right corner of your mat. Bend your left knee towards you. Hold with your hands the outside edge of your left leg, keeping the left knee bent. Bring the leg towards you and out to the left, towards you and to the left. And roll your left abdomen to the right. Keep that right leg charged as your anchoring leg. The heel pressing down. Let the front shoulders roll back, relax the front throat, feel the opening that's coming to the groin, to the leg, see if the knee can come higher, closer towards you, and then exhale and release, refinding Supta Tadasan, buttocks moving towards the heels, front shoulders rolled back, lower back on the floor, supported, bring the arms up to the sky, cross the thumbs, and re-stretch the arms behind you, so we're finding a long vertical stretch. Keep pressing down into the heels, keeping the feet very alert, the toes stretched, and feel as if your buttocks and your sacrum are always moving towards your heels, which keeps the lower back safe, long, and connected. In opposition to this force, stretch the arms so that the sides of the waist can stretch and the front left and front right rib cages can broaden. Now bring the arms back up, bend your elbows, and with your hands hold your elbow tips and bring them down to the floor behind you. Keep moving the buttocks towards the heels. Very important. Keep the legs charged and thighs rolling in. As you pull the elbow tips to the floor behind you, press your shoulder blades up to the sky. Feel the armpit open, the chest open. Keep pulling the elbow tips back and down, back and down, pressing the shoulder blades up without losing any of that firmness and stability in the legs and the heels. And in this way, the sternum, the diaphragm, the lungs opening even more creating what we call a chest imprint, a broadness from inside. Then bringing the arms back up and changing the cross of the elbows and settling the forearms back onto the floor behind you for the other side. Move the trapezius muscles down away from the ears so the cervical spine stays long and the brain stays quiet and passive. Keep the thighs rolling in towards each other, the kneecaps facing the sky, the shin bones firm, pushing through the balls of the feet. And very importantly, keep pressing the shoulder blades upwards into the upper back to open the chest. And now release the arms. And bending the knees, make fists with your hands. Place your hands right on the outer edges of the hips, supporting the outer groins, and bring the knees, the legs, to Baddha Konasan. Make sure the buttock energy is moving towards the heels, keeping the lower back long and unstrained. The pubic bone broad and wide, the groins wide. If need be, lift the buttocks and manually move them with your fingertips towards the heels and feel a new length come. The shoulders rolled back, the face quiet. Relaxing more and more into the ground, into the earth. Now we're going to move the hands out a little bit. So moving the fists closer towards the knees, right about in the middle of the outside edge of your thighs. We roll the shoulders back, finding a peacefulness, a softness, relaxing the abdomen, relaxing the muscles of the abdomen, feeling all that we've worked alive and flowing, a network of dancing cells. The entire body flowing to source, to openness, to restfulness. And now using the hands to bring the legs back up, we're going to go and lie down with our legs up against the wall. 
This is called Vipai Titikarani, and it's a wonderful way to get the effects of an inversion without the strain of the headstand when our necks and our muscles of that area are not yet ready. It's also fantastic just to do at any time of the day if you need to relax and really calm down. So getting as close as you can to the wall, if your hamstrings are very tight, you only want to come in as close as necessary so that there's no strain because you want to be able to relax in this pose right now. Like all poses, there are different applications for the pose, but right now we're using it to rest and relax. And the legs should not be rigid, they should be straight, but allow them to roll open so the inner ankles are rolling to the outer ankles. In this way, releasing tension from the legs, from the leg muscles, which in turn will affect the tension that we hold in the abdomen and all the other organs in the gut, the reproductive organs, the organs of excretion. So everything getting a chance to release, to relax, to rest. With an exhalation, also relax the shoulders to the ground. So the arms are spiraling naturally open from the root of the arms, from the shoulders, from the armpit, and the palms are turned up to the sky. Feel that you're lying right in the middle of the back of the head so the sides of the neck are even. And now relax the jaw so that the lower jaw is hanging from the top jaw. Don't force the breath in any way, releasing all expectations of how your breath should be, just allowing the breath to happen to you to find its natural flow. As you rest, as you relax, as you detach, as you observe. And through that detachment and that soft, natural breath comes a natural peacefulness. If there's any discomfort in the legs, move a little bit further away from the wall. The lower back should be supported by the floor. So if you find that there's any overarching of the lower back, adjust so that the lower back has that support and in this way, even as you lie here, in complete passiveness, the femur bones are gently being integrated into the hip sockets in a nice, natural way. And when they're integrated into the hip sockets, the backs of the hips become more even and broad and full and supportive of the posture and the body in general. So allowing the pose to do you completely. And this kind of softness is in itself an art to relax but to observe the relaxation as it's happening. So staying connected to it and yet being soft and passive. And now you're going to bend the knees towards you so the feet will be on the wall. So it's like a Dvi Parasutta Pavanamuktasan. And make sure that your front waists are long, that you're not cramping the front abdomen as the knees come slightly towards you. Have the inner knees touching, the inner feet touching, have that alignment on the front left and right pelvis. And then gently rolling over to the right hand side. And just lying here a little bit, making ourselves ready to come out, to sit up. And using the hands to gently roll back up to sitting, coming back to our days, back to our lives. Namaste. I hope you feel invigorated, stretched, and restored at the same time. I hope we practice again together soon.